Hello guys, welcome back to another Glory Hunter video. Today we're returning with one final look at the save as we're going to load up all of our save files that we have, go back in time and take an in-depth look at each season that we had with our clubs during this journey. As I mentioned in the previous video, we are going to take a full deep dive into the save as we've been at so many different clubs, used so many different players, so let's just jump straight into this. Also guys, it's the return of the webcam, so hello, I'm going to be looking down here a lot of the time, my webcam's up there, so I may not be making it direct eye contact, but um, let's just jump straight into this. We're actually uh, currently still at Nottingham Forest, where of course we ended up, and what I wanted to do... Um, was of course just have a look obviously we'll um, we'll look into this in a little bit more detail but of course we ended up clinching at the Premier League title and well actually the domestic treble um, whilst we were here at Nottingham Forest so of course we'll look through that we're going to go in chronological order but before we get to that we're just going to take a quick look at the my career section where as you can see, we uh, we played a total of 515 games in our Glory Hunter journey, 367 of them being wins, 82 draws and 66 defeats. We scored just shy of 1,300 goals and conceded just over 500. So our, um, our goals for and against ratio was actually pretty good, as you would expect um, within the save. We did obviously start to concede more on a uh, consistent basis towards the end of the save when we adjusted the sliders. So what we're going to do is just go into each individual season, load up the save and take a look at the squad that we had, um, our transfers and obviously how we ended off each season. Season. So we of course started with Atletico Madrid in the first uh, the first season of the save, and um, of course we went on to win. It was a European double, wasn't it? I believe we won at the Copa de España alongside La Liga and the Europa League after being grouped in the Champions League. So pretty good season only the four defeats and I think only one of them was domestically so we'll head over to the Atletico Madrid save and we'll take a quick look around all right then guys so here we are on the Atletico Madrid save we are just into the beginning of June now this of course is how we had the squad set up in the 4-2-3-1 now I actually remember Carrasco going down injured I believe it was yeah Carrasco was injured for the Europa League final so we had to make a few changes Adama Traore who featured at uh, Lons as well came in on the right with Lamar on the left and I really liked this team as our, our first team it was really good fun the back line was very very solid Jimenez and of course Pau Torres who went on to be an absolute goat of the save uh, we also had Molina a right back who again we use at Roma as well was very very solid and of course, Jan Oblak in goal as well, who we used at Bayer Leverkusen. So I want to take a look at the transfers we completed, because to my memory, we didn't make a huge amount of sales. I forgot we had Antonio Gomis here, who of course was our backup keeper at Lons. I'd completely forgotten that he was actually here. He was only 65 overall. That's funny. Small world, Antonio. We, made, we got rid of quite a few of the players that didn't really feature. Um, Gerbich went as well. We didn't make a huge amount of sales. Felipe, who was 34 years of age, um, he went for 11.6, but... Uh, Condogbia for 26.5 I think was our biggest sale yeah so so we didn't really get rid of a huge amount of players in this first season there were more sort of small departures obviously Alderweireld and Adama Traore came in in January and were both really good to help kind of bolster the squad um, both really good signings there uh, Dominic came in as our backup keeper we signed Pavard as a backup sort of fullback slash centre back he was very solid it's, it's so intriguing going back and looking at some of these players that we signed of course Thomas Partey came in as our sort of big summer signing 28 million plus Axel Witzel I said from the get-go I wanted someone who was a bit more of a defensive CDM and Partey was our man but of course the first signing that we ever made in the save how historic Pau Torres for 24.7 million plus Stefan Savage what a signing and he would go on to be the absolute goat of this save I think it is fair to say that Pau Torres was probably the greatest player that we used in this save. 
He was so, so good for us. Um, obviously, Old Black had a brilliant debut season for us, but we um, we used him at Bayer Leverkusen. But Pau Torres, in his first year, actually only featured in 13 La Liga games. I think potentially uh, went down injured for a period of time. Hermoso featured quite a lot. Um, but yeah, Pau Torres, considering how good he was, didn't feature that much for us in the first year. Played a lot in our Europa League run um, when, of course, we went on to win it. Molina was absolutely class at right back. Um, 40 appearances for him. No goals, but six assists. Only, again, featured 19 times in La Liga. I think I really did rotate my side quite a lot in this first season because the guys that kind of went on to be star-studded in this save didn't feature a huge amount um thomas party again only 24 appearances in la liga so i was clearly changing the team out quite a lot carrasco very good season for him nine goals and 12 assists from that left hand side lamar just the six goals but seven assists and he actually probably featured the most out of our outfield players with 36 appearances in the league campaign we also had the likes of sao niguez rdp was very very good for us of course marcos urente was probably at the best of of the bunch seven goals and 14 assists for him um, in our first season it's, it's a shame he was 28 so i never really got to use him again in this save but really enjoyed um using him in this first uh season koke was pretty decent as well went down with an acl i believe around january time so we didn't see a huge amount of him but he did well in uh limited minutes griezmann and felix were probably our two players of the season both had a really good return griezmann 15 goals and 12 assists and Zhao Felix with 27 goals and 7 assists. He really was fantastic in that number 10 position. And of course, the main man up top for us really was Angel Correa. Only the 9 goals in La Liga, but he did crop up with, with 8 in our Europa League run. So very, very good return in that competition. Mateus Cunha was decent as well. Got 10 in the league with 6 assists. And Morata also chipped in with a few, mainly off the bench as well. But yeah, this was our squad for the first season here with Atletico Madrid. I'd say definitely uh, Zhao Felix was probably our star man with those 27 goals in all competitions. Of course, if we head over to the standings, we know we ended up winning La Liga by it was just a slender four points in the end. We had two defeats, although I'm fairly sure that they both fell towards the end of the season. Yeah, I've just found them there. They were actually the, the two last games. So we lost 6-5 to Cadiz. I remember that game. And then we also lost to Batiste by two goals to nil on the final day. So with the title wrapped up, we threw away the Invincible season. And we had to wait until the final season of the save to finally accomplish that Invincible campaign. We, of course, also won the Copa del Rey. I believe we were 3-0 up in this game and allowed Real Madrid back into it. So it looks a little bit tighter uh, than the game actually was. But that completed the domestic double. And then we also, of course, won the Europa League on penalties against Real Sociedad with Seco Fafana missing that all-important penalty to complete the treble for Atletico Madrid. So it was, it was a really good debut year for us. Obviously, we ticked off three years trophies in our first season which definitely kind of set the pace so of course after that first season with Atletico Madrid we'd won the domestic double and we had the freedom of Europe to decide pretty much where we wanted to go we'd uh, we'd won the two trophies in Spain so we knew we didn't have to stay there and we ended up moving to Italy to take over Jose Mourinho at Roma of course, we were there for two seasons rather than the solitary one. In our first year, we were, of course, runners up in the league, so we weren't able to tick that off. But we did win at the Coppa Italia, as you can see there. We did manage to uh, pick up our fourth trophy of the save. Uh, we were in the Europa League as Roma had finished in the Europa League spots the season before, and we didn't really take it too seriously as we knew that we'd already won it. So, pretty good season. Um, our record transfer fee went to Gonzalo. Solo and Nasio for 43 and a half and he was such a good signing for us. And then heading into season two with Roma, of course, the uh, the board set us the objective of winning the league title, which, of course, we did manage to do in our second year. 140 goals scored in that campaign was absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, one Serie A, 
Uh, record transfer fee was for Molina, who we were reunited with after signing him from Atletico Madrid. As I mentioned, won the Serie A. We did, of course, make it to the Coppa Italia final as well, but having won it the year before um, with a bit of pressure off, we did end up losing to Inter Milan in the final. And in the Champions League, of course, we returned to the competition having been in the Europa the year before and we made it to the quarterfinals. And if my memory serves me, that is the season we lost to Atletico Madrid in the quarterfinals. So, yeah, a bit of a disappointing campaign in Europe, but again, really good record. Just the five losses, 140 goals scored. And this team was so fun to use with the three at the back. Let's go and take a look. So here we are at the end of our second season with Roma and I thought we had a pretty good season. The board disagreed. You can see they were not very happy with us and that was because they wanted us to reach the final of the Champions League where of course as mentioned we crashed out to Atletico Madrid. We did of course manage to win the league title and actually complete all the rest of our objectives so they were really set on the Champions League final. This is the squad as it was at the end of our two seasons and obviously Dybala and Abraham, the two main men up top. Uh, Jonathan Martens, who I'm quite sad we never got to use again in the save. Not sure where he is, but Nicolo Zaniolo should be here somewhere as well. There, 86 overall. He was also very important in that number 10 position behind the two main men, Dybala and Abraham. Pellegrini, the captain, brilliant next to Cristante, who was so under underrated in this team he did so much of the dirty work that you didn't see a lot of the time um, our fullbacks Udogi and Molina were absolutely superb just perfect for that wing back position um, and in defense Varane Ibanez and it was generally Inacio in a left center back but you can see a young Romero Herrera here just 70 overall at 16 years of age you love to see it we know that he went on to feature quite a lot in this save here we are in the squad hub, of course, Edward Mendy, who we did bring back towards the end of our time at Nottingham Forest. Um, more in his prime here and kept 19 clean sheets in 38 games, which was pretty decent for us. As I mentioned, our fullbacks or wingbacks were perfect in the system. Udogi and Spinazzola were both brilliant down that left-hand side. Molina was brilliant down the right-hand side. Notched up three goals and seven assists, but always an outlet. As I mentioned, our defence was... Um, was brilliant. We had Ibanez on the right, who was probably a bit of an unsung hero in the back line. Varane, who of course we signed in the middle, was superb. And Gonzalo Inacio as well went down injured in the uh, second season, but he was so good for us over our two years here at Roma. As I mentioned, Cristante was brilliant next to the captain, Pellegrini. All these guys sort of chipped in, like Moretti, Pabega, Ravella were never really starters, but all did really well. There's another young Ecuadorian, Javi Carmona. We really developed some Ecuadorian beasts in this save. Of course, Javi Carmona went on to, um, to be an absolute tank of a player. He was at Chelsea um, and grew to be really high rated. Uh, Zaniolo, as I mentioned, was really good in the 10 next to Jonathan Martins really good year for him 13 goals and 10 assists in all competitions Pellegrini the captain also brilliant in that slightly deeper midfield position um, but it was Dybala and Tammy Abraham who were really the main men Dybala with an average rating of 7.48 in the league with 16 goals and 18 assists and of course Tammy managed to hit 40 in all competitions he was the first man to do that in the save 31 goals and 30 assists in the league also a quick shout out to Nonto who went on to be a bit of a beast at PSG but he was really really good for us 11 goals and 12 assists in all competitions as I mentioned we did of course win the Serie A in our second year it did take us two years but we just edged out Milan in the end by five points we managed to reach 100 goals in the league as well so very very good season for us after finishing second the season before we, of course, lost the Coppa Italia final to Inter Milan, but we had beaten Lazio the year before to make sure that the trophy was ticked off. And, of course, in the Champions League, as I mentioned, it was that knockout to Atletico Madrid in the quarterfinal. Jao Felix came back to haunt me and ruin our Champions League hopes. 
So after conquering Rome, of course, we headed to Germany to take over as Bayer Leverkusen boss, but it was a bit of a weird one to end season four as we actually joined halfway through the campaign. You can see only 26 games played, but we did manage to jump up into third place and secure Champions League for season five, which would be our first full season at Leverkusen. Of course, Pau Torres was signed by the club, not by myself, uh, for 59.9 million, but we had a really good second half of the campaign managed to finish in third of course they were already knocked out of the dfb pokal by the time we had joined so we had no chance of winning that trophy but of course in our second season at leverkusen our first full year we did really well won at the bundesliga and again this team was so much fun to use in that 4-4-2 we had so many good attacking players um, we of course won at the dfb pokal ignore the fact that it says final rather and winners is because to, to basically to secure a move I had to lose that final after winning it when I tried to move I couldn't faction a move anywhere so we had to lose the final so we got a move to our fourth club so of course we did win that we'll see that when we load up the save um, but yeah won the Bundesliga won the DF DFB Pokal and made it to the Champions League semi-finals we were getting closer and closer and closer had a really fun side and it was our first full year of the club and we scored 164 goals in all competitions let's go and check it out all right guys here we are at Leverkusen and actually my save file is just before the DFB Pokal final which was the final game of the save and I'm pretty sure we won it by two goals to one in the end yes we went a goal down didn't we um, because En Naziri scored against us and then we managed to turn the game on its head but of course this save file is just slightly before that if we head over to the squad we of course were playing in our 4-4-2 system with Adi Amy and Gabriel Jesus up top this team was so so good uh, Diaby and Saka on the wings were just electric I think I said um, in the season review that I didn't quite get the output out of the wide players that I wanted but they were still really influential to how we played Renato Sanchez was class as our box-to-box -box midfielder and Neves the captain was really good as well our team was quite settled here at Leverkusen, so generally this was our strongest 11, and this is what we went with. Of course, Pau Torres reunited now at 30 years of age, and he wasn't done there. So we'll run through the player stats very quickly, and I believe this was the period in the save where we adjusted the sliders. It was certainly when we started to concede on a more regular basis. Look at Pau Torres with five goals. You absolutely love to see it. This man was so important for us. But yeah, we started concede conceding on a bit more of a regular basis uh, Ramiro Herrera getting up to a 77 you love to see but as I say we won the Bundesliga pretty convincingly in the end not for the first time we scored over a hundred goals in uh, the league season Renato Sanchez I absolutely love this man I still feel like we were slightly robbed of him of course we did reunite with him at RC Lons but the time at Leverkusen was uh, short-lived because of injury Ruben Neves the captain was superb really consistent performer um, across all competitions and of course scored in the Europa League final against Spurs in I believe that was must have been the end of season four with Bayer Leverkusen um, to pick up our second Europa League title of the save Moussa Diaby and Saka, as I mentioned briefly, their output may be not as good as it could have been. 10 goals and 7 assists for Moussa and 7 goals and 14 assists for Bukayo. Um, but it was actually Timo Werner who stole the limelight from our wide players. He, of course, played up top a little bit as well, but 16 goals and 14 assists was brilliant from Turbo Timo. I forget that, of course, we had Sadio Mane before picking up his regen at Nottingham Forest, and he was bloody brilliant for us. 18 goals and 11 assists in 24 Bundesliga games before going down injured. Um, Gabriel Jesus was very solid as well. I remember he was out for a period of time with injury as well, um, which meant that Kareem Adeyemi was our main man, really, in uh, this Bayer Leverkusen side in the second season. And he was absolutely superb, of course, followed that off 
on into our time at Nottingham Forest where he was playing a slightly different position but we still got the best out of him. Kareem 27 goals and 14 assists playing up front in this Leverkusen side. And as I mentioned, we of course won the Bundesliga pretty convincingly. Wow, I didn't realise we won it by 14 points. We absolutely smashed the Bundesliga. 109 goals scored, just the three losses. And of course, in the Champions League, it was not Chelsea who knocked us out. We got past them in the round of 16, knocked out Bayern Munich in the quarterfinals as well. And it was Barcelona who tore us apart in the second leg. We got one all draw at the Nou Camp and got torn apart at the Bayern Arena by four goals to one and um, Barcelona went on to play City in the final no idea what the outcome was but for us it was a 5-2 aggregate defeat to FC Barcelona and our wait for the Champions League went on we of course then headed to England for the first time to take over the team that I support of course Chelsea as we went in search of that Champions League and of course Chelsea were the team that delivered it we had a huge transfer window in what was season six of the save had a huge transfer window obviously brought in quite a few big players and we had a brilliant campaign 167 goals scored was most likely the the highest we got in a season um, of course we won the Premier League at the first time of asking got knocked out in the FA Cup fourth round and of course Champions League as I mentioned did go on to win it so we were finally able to light up the Champions League trophy which was the one we'd been after for so long won the Premier League our first time in England but knew that heading to France the next season we would have to come back to England at a later date so here is our team set up at Chelsea where of course in the second half of the season we brought in Declan Rice and went to this 5-3-2 the team was pretty set in this system and specifically this lineup as well this was by far our best lineup that we could put out we had some pretty decent squad depth as well which obviously helped with the champions league but as i mentioned this starting 11 a few of the guys on the bench really helped out where's chill well there he is 87 overall at this point but of course went down injured um, but the, yeah this lineup was by far our best really really good when we moved to that 5-3-2 and again, we'll rattle through and have a look at a few of the sets. I'm trying to get through this a little bit quicker as I want to do my team of the save at the end. I don't want this video to go on for too long, but Ben Chilwell, of course, brilliant. Two goals and eight assists in the Premier League. Only 26 appearances due to injury, but really high average rating. And him and James as our fullbacks were just absolutely superb in this team. Speaking of Reese James, he was, of course, our captain. And I think I could see into the future because, of course, he became Chelsea captain in real life he was a lot fitter in this save than he is in real life as he played in 32 of our 38 league games got five goals and 20 assists and set a new premier league record of course brennan johnson went on and broke that in our final year at nottingham forest but for a defender 20 assists is still a record and he was absolutely superb on the right side we had loads of very good defenders including ben godfrey who of course was at forest when we joined uh for Farner and levi colwill surprisingly was probably the best despite being the lowest rated and um, was really really good for us on the left side of our defense badia shield who of course we signed tony rudiger was here as well kula Bali came back Malo Gusto, of course, we bought in, who's now joined up with Chelsea in real life and was great backup to Reese James. As I mentioned earlier, the signing of Declan Rice in midfield was massive because it meant we could go to the three in midfield. And he, next to Pedri and Enzo Fernandez, who I think, again, was quite underrated in this team. Eight goals and 17 assists from centre mid was really good from the Argentinian. Pedri next to him was also brilliant. But it was the signing of Rice that really transformed this side and I think is the deciding factor that went on to win us the Champions League. We, of course, had a lot of attacking players, and we did start off with the uh, the wide system, but, of course, went to the 5-3-2. And our main attackers were, of course, Kai Havertz and Victor Osimhen, who hit 62 goals in all competitions. He was so good in this season for us. Havertz was very, very good as well. 23 goals and 24 assists in all competitions. Tony and Rashford provided great backup as well, but this was such a good chance. Chelsea team. 
And of course, it was the team that delivered us our first and only Champions League title of the save. We managed to get it ticked off finally in Season 6 after so much heartbreak in the previous years, getting closer and closer every year. Of course, we had a pretty shocking knockout in the Carabao Cup quarterfinals to Cardiff City, but of course, we weren't asked about that. It was the FA Cup that really hurt, where of course, we got knocked out by, I believe it was Manchester United, in the fourth round yeah 4-1 away at Old Trafford that really hurt because we knew we only had one chance at this trophy but we did go on to lift the Premier League pretty convincingly in the end 124 goals scored of course Osimhen got I think 51 52 of them and was absolutely superb so after winning that Champions League with Chelsea we took the decision to head off elsewhere knowing that we would have to come back to try and lift the FA Cup and of course the only country that we had left to go to was France at this stage we knew it was going to be a really tough test to dethrone PSG and in our first year all I really wanted to do was get as close as we could to them that's what we did finished in second place of course we had a pretty small budget but we brought back Lois Openda, which was probably the bargain of the save it was 18.5 million and someone else went the other way I cannot remember who that someone was but Openda went on to be just as good as Victor Osment was at Chelsea we got knocked out in the Coupe de France quarterfinals I believe by Lille and of course the Europa League was a pretty poor campaign we dropped down to the conference league where we of course lost that final but it wasn't a trophy we had to win this was our only season in the save where we didn't win a trophy which is a little bit disappointing as I would have loved to have uh, gone the whole save winning a trophy but didn't matter it just made us even stronger as we went into our second year uh, with RC Lons where we were finally able to dethrone PSG. Not only did we win the Ligue 1 trophy, of course we won at the Coupe de France as well, beating PSG in the final. And we went on a run in the Champions League, making it to the semi-finals. So this was a brilliant season from RC Lons. Bit of an underdog story, as I'd say at the time, PSG were still favourites, but we did really, really well in this season. Of course, it was a little bit more recent, but we'll still go and take a look at how we got on. Of course, this season with RC Lons wasn't as far back as some of the others, so you might not have to cast your mind too far. But of course, the signing of Marquinhos really helped at the beginning of the season Edson Alvarez was massively underrated in this team just sitting and Renato Sanchez was brilliant in the box to box but of course it was Lois Openda that was the main man loved Moses out on that right hand side as well our front three was absolutely superb in this second season we of course went quite big in the transfer window in this second season with Lons and we brought in a lot of the veteran players which actually all did a really good job for us. Marquinhos as I mentioned was a great signing at centre about 36 years of age but he was brilliant next to the young Ramiro Herrera. Obviously I'm, I'm scrolling through this quite quickly if there is any individual stats that you really want to take a look at feel free to pause the video to have a look. Um, obviously as I mentioned Renato Sanchez really good year for him 11 goals and 15 assists managed to keep himself a lot fitter than he had previously so really happy to see him excel of course Seco Fofana was the club captain the man that we brought back at the beginning of our first season with the club and of course had a few injuries towards the end of his career but still a bit of a goat of this season Leon Clerk was brilliant um, in our more advanced role next to Rafa Guerrero both of those those two kind of competing for that one position. Guerrero definitely had less of a goal threat, but the 23 assists in all competition was brilliant. Leon Clerk got 11 goals and 15 assists, and of course that got him a big move to Arsenal. Moses was, however, our assist king on that right-hand side, and he was he was a bit of a weird winger because he, he, he was quick, but he didn't feel massively quick in game, but his dribbling was so good. He felt so smooth on the ball. 22 goals and 8 assists in 37 league and appearances was exactly what I wanted from him um, adding a little bit more end product to his game Noah Dennis was brought in of course as kind of the successor to Kylian Mbappe had a decent year 15 goals six assists in all competitions didn't quite set the league alight as I thought he might
like, but he was very influential. And of course, the main man, Lois Opender. We brought him back, nearly made him club captain, but that went to Seco Fafana. And in the first year with us, he got 36 goals, which was a pretty decent return. But in this second season, he just went absolutely ham. 57 goals and 12 assists in all competitions. Didn't quite top Victor Osimhen's 62 at Chelsea, but he did manage to get to 50 league goals and he was definitely the reason we pipped PSG to the title. I would definitely say that this season with RC Lons was our most hard fought. Of course, winning the uh, the league and title on goal difference in the end. We were by far the top scorers, but you can see defensively we weren't actually that good with the joint third or fourth best defensive record. So we did really struggle at the back, which was always our problem at RC Lons. We were not great at the back, but Lois or Penda, his goals definitely fired us to this title. And of course, we beat PS SG in the Coupe de France final as well that was a, a crazy game had me sweating the whole time and of course we nearly threw it away at the end if you remember that chance that we gave away um, and it was some brilliant defending bailed us out but yeah really good season as I mentioned made it to the uh, Champions League semi-finals as well so we weren't quite able to complete the treble again Barcelona dunked on us as they did um, at Bayer Leverkusen but I wasn't too fussed about that we we were of course focusing on the domestic season and we did exactly what we needed to do we dethroned PSG and won the two domestic trophies in France and of course guys that takes us to the here and now with Nottingham Forest where we were domestic treble winners lifting the Premier League Carabao Cup and the FA Cup and of course we did it without losing a single game in the domestic season this is obviously a lot more fresh in the memory, but we, of course, set up this crazy tactic here at Nottingham Forest. I don't really know what possessed me to do it. I've been watching too much Pep Guardiola, but yeah, I mean, this team was just absolutely superb. It's going to run through the squad very quickly as we did go through all of this in the previous episode where we did a full season roundup. But yeah, really enjoyed our time here at Nottingham Forest. It was such a nice way to round out the save and um, yeah really happy with how the save went in general obviously we started this way back in january i'm now recording this at the beginning of september so it's been a long long process i've never really done anything like this before really really enjoyed it, it was such a fun save we used so many good players and i had such a blast uh, playing recording and um, uploading this save so i hope you guys did enjoy it as well as i mentioned I had such a good time making Making this save before we do end this video though I don't want it to be too long but I do want to go over my team of the save as I think it's something fun to look at the, the best 11 um, in my opinion that we've used so let me know down below who would be in your team of the save if there's anyone that you think it deserves to be in it we're gonna jump straight into this I'll try not to keep it too long as we've already been going for a while but it's time for the team of the save all right then guys my uh, my webcam has just died so unfortunately we have lost that for this final segment but we're just going to run through i'm going to try and keep it quite short because i don't want this to drag on forever but this is my team of the save starting off with the goalkeeper i don't really think it could be anyone else but jan oblak he was of course with us at atletico madrid and by leverkusen and i'd say throughout the save it was only ever really between him potentially edward mendy and esteban mendy who I mentioned in the last episode of the save was absolutely superb for us. I went for All Black, maybe a little bit out of nostalgia because he was with us at two clubs. He did win a treble with us at Atletico Madrid and was a big part of our success at Leverkusen as well. So All Black starts in between the sticks moving on to right back again a bit of a no-brainer for me i've gone for reese james was the captain that won us our one and only champions league of the save of course his output on that right hand side was absolutely superb record for most assists by a premier league defender and captain of our champions league winning side honorable mention at right back goes to melina who was very very good for us at both atletico Madrid 
Madrid and Roma, but I think for me, James wins that one pretty comfortably. Next up, we've got our right centre-back, and this was quite a tough one to pick. I'm sure you know who the left-sided centre-back is going to be, but we had to pair him with somebody. I really struggled to pick one person for this position, and I ended up going for Gonzalo Inacio uh, from Roma, and that is because he sticks out from for me as just being so solid at our time with Roma. He was absolutely superb for us. I was tempted by uh, Varane, Christian Romero from Forest, one of the boys from Chelsea, um, potentially Leverkusen, although we did concede a hell of a lot of goals there. But Gonzalo Inacio goes in. He was really, really solid for us in uh, the back three at Roma. So, of course, slotting in next to Inacio, you know who it's going to be. It's Pau Torres. He was so important for us in this save. Solid at the back, became a bit of a goal-scoring machine as well at the, uh, the three clubs that we used him at. And, I mean, as I've mentioned before, for me, he was the goat of this save. My favourite player throughout the whole thing and uh, yeah Pau Torres rightfully takes his place at left side centre back and to complete the back four with our left back again for me there was only really a couple of options but it had to be Ben Chirwell who slots into that left back position he alongside James were superb for us at Chelsea and of course we linked up with Chirwell once again at Nottingham Forest where he was a really important part of our treble winning side so now moving forward into the midfield quite a, uh, a tricky decision to narrow it down to two players and actually the first one to go in there may come as a bit of a surprise but it's Enzo Fernandez who of course was with us at Chelsea he was really 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 underrated in that team got through a lot of the day work popped up with goals and assists from that left-sided centre mid position and he never really got the credit that he deserved as I mentioned with James and Chilwell also part of the side that won us the Champions League and I think that definitely adds a little bit of credit to him couple of shout outs to Pellegrini uh, Cristante Renato Sanchez as well who unfortunately misses out and the reason for that is because the man who partners Enzo is Kefren Turam, who was so, so important for us in this final season at Forest. Such a difficult decision between Renato and Kefren. Maybe Renato could have gone in for Enzo, but I think with Kefren and Renato playing that same position, I had to go for one over the other. I went for Kefren. Renato Sanchez, honourable mention. He's the 12th man. But for me, Enzo and Turan make it into the midfield. Moving forward into the attacking areas of the pitch and the first man to come in is Kareem Adeyemi. Of course, with us at Bayer Leverkusen and then again at Nottingham Forest, played different positions for us at both clubs, but was just as influential. Scored lots of goals for us at Leverkusen playing as a central striker. And again, in this final season at Nottingham Forest, he was superb playing from that right-hand side. So Kareem's in on the right. I think that is very deserved. And to join him playing from the left-hand side is his Nottingham Forest teammate, Joseph Leahy and he comes in uh, after a brilliant season of course he did play up top for us but I've sort of shoveled him into the team on this left hand side he was brilliant got 40 well over 40 goals lots of assists as well in this Nottingham Forest team and of course we were treble winners so he joins Kareem Adeyemi playing it just behind the front two the first of those being Victor Osimhen of course got the uh, record number of goals in a season for us with 62 there was absolutely no way he wasn't going to be in it only used him for one year and it was probably the best year we had from a striker in the save but partnering him what a strike force this would be it's Lois Opender of course used at RC Lons he was superb that second season where he got 50 odd goals 50 in the league him and Osimhen up front with Leigh and Adeyemi in behind would be absolutely lethal but a 
couple of shout outs have to go to the likes of Tammy Abraham, even Gabriel Jesus, Dybala. You know, there were so many good players that, that, that we used throughout this save, but we did have to narrow it down to 11. This is the 11 that I decided to go for. So let me know if there's anyone that you would have brought in to the team of the save, anyone that you would have taken out. I think the only one for me that I would really consider is Renato for Enzo, but with Kefren next to Enzo, I think that gives us a nice balance in midfield but guys that's where we will end this episode it's been quite a long one as we've gone back and taken an in-depth look at each of the uh, save files that we had as i've mentioned before i absolutely loved this save so so much so thank you so much for all the support i'm thinking we might take a little bit of a break um, i'm looking to come back with uh, eas fc 24 or whatever it's called with a brand new career mode it will be something um, a little bit different to what we had on the channel with the glory hunter so gonna give myself a couple of weeks off and then we will come back there will still be a couple of streams and videos in the meantime especially as we uh, close in on 500 subs as I'm recording this I'm hoping that by the time this is out we will already be there and the 500 subscriber special will be ready and released but anyway guys that will do it thank you so much for the support on the glory hunter save and I will catch you for some more career mode in EAS FC 24. Peace.